welcome to another GCSE economics video with me, Mr. Goff, for mrgoff.com. This video will focus on international trade. International trade is when people in one country buy goods and services from producers in a different country. When people in the UK buy goods from other countries, these goods are known as imports. When UK producers sell their goods and services in foreign markets, those goods and services are known as exports. To understand why countries trade, let's consider this very simplified example. Both country A and country B enjoy banana ice cream. Each of them devotes half of their resources towards producing bananas and half of their resources towards producing milk. In country A, they have a high amount of rainfall and it favours milk production. They produce 6,000 litres of milk and two tonnes of bananas. In country B, they have a lot of sunshine. They're able to produce eight tonnes of bananas and 2,000 litres of milk. Together, these countries produce 8,000 litres of milk and 10 tonnes of bananas. Now let's look at what happens if each country specialises in what they're best at producing. In this case, country A now puts all their resources towards producing milk and they're able to produce 12,000 litres of milk. This is an additional 4,000 litres of milk. Meanwhile, country B puts all their resources towards producing bananas and they're able to produce 16 tonnes of bananas. This is six additional tonnes of bananas in total on what would have been produced if both countries produced both milk and bananas. And so from this simple example, you can see that by using specialisation, we can increase the total output of all the production in the world by specialising and having international trade. Different countries have differing specialities because of a range of factors. This might include the availability of natural resources, differing climates for agriculture and tourism, and differing labour markets that allow for differing specialities in terms of production. Increased international trade has gone hand in hand with the better international relations that have been forged since the end of World War II. There are a number of benefits for consumers from international trade. The first of these is lower prices. This happens because there's a greater amount of competition because markets are opened up to producers from all over the world. This leads to people being more efficient and cost effective and therefore being able to offer the best prices to consumers. As well as low prices, competition leads firms to seek out new innovative products to be able to tempt customers with. With more products produced by specialists, this leads to higher quality products. And overall, all of this leads to a greater amount of choice for consumers. International trade also brings a range of benefits for producers. The most obvious of these is that they have a bigger market to which to sell their goods and services. They may also be able to acquire cheaper supplies as inputs to their production process. Increased competition from international trade forces firms to become more efficient. One of the ways they may choose to do this is by growing in size and being able to take advantage of economies of scale. This leads to them having lower average costs. Of course, it's not all benefits from international trade and we'll be taking a closer look at who benefits and who doesn't benefit as much and who maybe loses out from international trade when we take a look at globalisation later in the course. That brings us to the end of this video on international trade. Join me in the next video when I'll be looking at free trade agreements. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics. And until next time, it's bye for now.